This video will guide you through installing the SmartLog Pro Web Manager software. We encourage referring to the user guide for the basic requirements and full installation instructions, as well as contacting the Emit Factory for remote support. You will also want to contact the Emit Factory for the link to download the program installation file and the user guide if you have not already received it via email. We recommend you install the program while logged in using the Windows ID of the user that will primarily be running the program. This user should have administrator permissions on the PC. An important thing to note is that the SmartLog Pro Web Manager will not run in Internet Explorer. You have to use Microsoft Edge, Chrome, Firefox, or other current web browser to run it. If you are using Internet Explorer on the PC you selected, please make sure you upgrade to Microsoft Edge or download an alternate browser before you begin. Prior to installing the SLP configurator, please make sure that you have read through the user guide and followed the instructions for installing or enabling IIS on the PC you will be using. The user guide explains how to do this in Windows 10 and Windows Server. In the user guide, you will find a link to the Microsoft URL Rewrite Module 2.0 for IIS. You can click on the link that we provide to open up the web page to it. And from there, you may click to download the file and install the extension. Going back to the guide, you will also find a link to the Microsoft SQL compact database and once again you can click on the link to be taken to that page and it has the option there for you to download and install it as well. The SLP configurator is the application used for the installation, configuration, and maintenance of the program. Emit customer service will have provided you with a link to the file or you may contact them to obtain it. The name of the file is configsetup.msi. Once you have downloaded it, you want to go ahead and run it and install it as I'm going to show now. As you can see here, I've already downloaded the file and placed it on my desktop. Just double click on it to run it. The installer will guide you through the steps. Click next. You can utilize the default folder. Once it's installed, you can click close. The installation will create a shortcut for you. So you can go ahead and double click on it to open up the program. Once you open up the SLP configurator, you will want to install the backend first and then the manager. To install the SLP backend, you want to go here and you'll want to enter in the installation folder. This information is shown in the guide, so you, if you need that information, you can see it there as well. The port is going to be 17200 by default, and you should only change that if that particular port is not feasible for some reason. Then you need to pick the folder for the database. The recommended one is C colon backslash Desco backslash SLP backslash data. You will leave the authorization header as is, and you can leave this portion as is as well. And once that information is inside, you can go ahead and click on install. SLP config will download an installation package from the emit content delivery network and set up everything see the progress down below here. Once the installation is done, you can click on the root link that's provided here to verify that everything is fine. If 
it works correctly, your browser should open up a web page containing uh, some text information. The text information is this message here, SLP API, you know, I have uh, the 2020 date and the word Desco, and that lets me know that the installation was uh, done correctly. So you can go ahead and close that and then close this window here and then you can go ahead and move on to installing the manager portion. For the folder you will want to use the default here as well which is c colon backslash desco backslash slp backslash admin as the default. The port number once again uh, it's 17205 here and you should not change that unless it's not feasible for some reason. The API root is going to appear automatically. Uh, the authorization header also is going to be there. There's no need to uh, modify those. So once that's ready, you can go ahead and click on install. And just like with the back end, it's going to go through and go ahead and complete it. Once the installation is done, you can click on the root link to verify that everything is correct. The browser should take you to the SLP Manager login page, just like this, and you will see a message for your username and password. You may simply use the username and password Desco in order to log in with the defaults, and that will take you to the main splash screen of the software. Once on the screen, you'll see that there'll be messages about the software not being licensed. In order to activate your software, you'll need to click on this key here, and that will bring up the SLP activation screen. Uh, and you can send this product ID to us at the Emmet factory, and we can provide you with the activation key for the software. The final step in the SLP installation is configuring the SmartLog Pro SE devices to talk to the back end. The smart logs are plug and play by design and the SLP config simplifies the task of the initial configuration of the server location. This task should be repeated whenever a new device is added to the system or if the location of the SLP backend changes for some reason. SLP config is capable of broadcasting the backend location to a local network using a special UDP message. All connected smart logs that are active will automatically pick up the message, acknowledge, and configure their backend location. Uh, please note that the SmartLog Pro SE units must reside on the same subnet as the server hosting the data for the initial configuration of the server location. An alternative method is available if this is not possible for some reason you will need to contact the Emit Factory for assistance with this. The configuration step is started by clicking on the Connected Devices Configuration button. You'll want to make sure that the SLP root is set correctly. The SLP root is the location of the SLP backend, but without the slash API suffix. You can go ahead and click on the Start button. and all connected devices will appear in the connected configured devices list after a few moments as you see here. Once the devices are configured there is no need to leave the broadcast active. You can click stop and then close. You can then navigate to the web page for the SmartLock Pro web manager via your browser. Once you have activated it with the license key Every connected smart lock will communicate with SLP and reveal its presence. If it doesn't exist yet in the system, it will show along with its serial number in the unknown devices section in the Smart Lock Pro Manager's main dashboard as shown here. The recommended way to add a smart log is to click on the attach button and this will bring up a simple pop-up screen where you can enter the name for the unit. Smart Log will get a default configuration which can be fine tuned in the administration Smart Log section uh, after the fact. The 
smart lock status, whether it's active or inactive, is controlled automatically. Whenever a device is connected, it will be active, that's shown here in green. And if it's not connected, it will show as inactive on the screen. For further information on software training, updates, and communication between the software and the testers, please contact the Emit Factory.